Uh, Brandon Essery is uh, Associate Professor of Italian and Coordinator of the Program in Italian Studies and Associate Chair of the World Languages and Cultures Department at Elon University in North Carolina. He works on transmediation and particularly when Italian history and literature are transformed into video games, the intersections of narratology and ludology and traditional literary narratives and, and digital game narratives. He also works on the representation of marriage in the Decameron. And in fact, today he is uh, giving us a talk entitled Giuoki e Sollazzi, Storytelling, Playing and Pandemics. Professor uh, Esri, you have the floor. Thank you. Can, can y'all hear me all right? Yes, we do. Okay, loud and clear. Can you see the um, PowerPoint right now? Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll just get to uh, rolling then. Um, let me get the PowerPoint up in slideshow mode. Is it still visible, the PowerPoint? Okay, excellent. And then I'll get my notes uh, over here. Okay, well, thank you so much. I, I did want to uh, begin by just offering my gratitude to the Center for Italian Studies, uh, to Giuseppe and Antonio, uh, who are here with us, and also to Annette uh, Palazzo, who's dealt with several of my ignorant questions about paperwork and so on and so forth uh, there at the Center. Uh, thank you to Professor Cardini and everyone else here, but uh, specifically to him and to Professor Olson for giving us this uh, very important bridge that we're all aware of, but perhaps not everyone is, of the, the connection between storia and storia, so raccontare and the actual uh, history itself. Uh, and then finally to Luigi Troiani, who mirabile dictu, it's now 14 years that I've been his uh, student, his colleague, and friend. So I just thank you all for, for bringing me here today to talk about this um, interesting uh, subject. Um, so yeah, we'll actually start off with a little bit of uh, uh, a quiz, okay? Uh, c'è pandemia o non c'è pandemia? I quiz non vanno via. We know this is good professors, as good uh, teachers. So uh, very quickly, I'll try to use the, um, I'll try to use the uh, quiz feature in um, Zoom, and I would ask you to decide whether you are, are very familiar with the terms or not. We know the term juoco, we know the term gioco, okay, a game, uh, so to speak. Uh, so would you imagine, based on what you know of the Decameron, that the following things are juochi or something more, something different, solazzi? All right, so let me give this a shot. Antonio helped set it up. So I'm going to start the poll. And if you would just click uh, what you think is the uh, right answer. So tavolieri o scacchi, I'm going to launch the poll. Is it visible? Can Giuseppe, someone confirm? Do you think playing tavolieri or scacchi is a gioco or a solazzo? And again, you can just click to, to vote if it's working. All right, I see two votes are in, it must be working. So let's see what we get, just a few moments. Three votes, four. Okay, anybody else before we close it? All right, I won't take up too much time, so we'll stop it. Uh, we'll show the results, and at least out of those of us who voted, it's an opinion of Juoco, that's not bad. Let's try uh, another one. Um, end polling and go to number three, which uh, this was uh, put up to us uh, or prepared for us by Christina. We have, oh, one second, I think it's, it's acting up. Launch polling is the two putting the devil back into hell from 310, a juoco or a solazzo. And we have the reference there. All right, let's see. Solazzo is pulling ahead, folks. Let, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, another second or two, and then again, I don't want to waste time, but we can have a little fun, Mocaccio style, talking about these things. Okay, this is a more popular vote. Okay, the votazione is much more active. Let's end it and share the results. Folks are thinking it is Solazzo. Interesting. And of course, I will tell you the answers, like a good prop at the end. Uh, let's go for punishing a wife and priest. What more Decameronian thing can there be? for adultery, or at least trying. Any takers, juoco o solazzo? All right, the vote. And again, we can stop after this one. I won't bore you too much with this, this nonsense. Okay, 
So Lazio is, is also pulling ahead. This is getting really active. Let's hope for as much participation on 3rd November. Uh, I'll end it there. You're thinking Solazzo. And then, oh, let's just uh, cut down to numero sette. We'll jump straight to the narration act, the act of recounting of a fabulation. And we will go for our final. What do we call it? Gioco or solazzo? Nel Decameron, cosa stiamo facendo? Stiamo facendo un gioco oppure ci stiamo solazzando? With the act of raccontare. And again, the punishment stops here. Va bene. Okay, very good. So Solazzo is pulling ahead. Oh, there's a Joco. It's all right. There are no wrong answers here, and it's anonymous. Uh, Antonio helped with that. He's like, let's just keep it anonymous. All right. All right, folks. So we'll stop the poll there, sharing results. Solazzo. So very quickly, uh, we'll stop. We don't have to uh, see them all, but you get this idea of a presence, right? Uh, and I'd say it's honestly a surprising abundance of these terms in the Decameron and a surprising mix of serious and non-serious, big surprise with Boccaccio, right? Positive, negative, and ambivalent context that makes the terms rather difficult to define. Uh, so we can move forward here. Um, slide answers come up now. And so you see, hopefully, the results of all of them. Uh, the joco, right? Are the visible now? The yellow results. Twenty five folks, you get this idea uh, from this uh, again uh, series of selections, or just a few examples of the presence of joco or solazzo in the Decameron. And I think it's really amazing that Boccaccio, with the words of Pampinea right from the beginning makes a distinction between these things. And we see at the outset of the Decameron, Boccaccio through the voice of Pampinea defines juochi and solazzi. Exemplary juochi are shown to be tabolieri et scacchieri and are to be avoided as the primary pastime for the brigata because in them someone loses and the loser or the viewers si turbi senza troppo piacere, they lose the pleasure of it. And so Solazzi, and in particular that of Novellando, is chosen by the queen as the preferred means of having fun, because one person telling a story can, we know sometimes they're not pleasant, the stories, can bring pleasure to everyone listening. At the beginning of the second novella of day two, Pampinea defines the Brigata's storytelling, the Novellando, as Solazzo, commanding that it continue with Nefile, and then after Pamphilo's first enjoyable tale. And here I offer Branca and Rig. Um, so we could have some questions about, I won't do the quiz again, I've already uh, messed up and lost some time, but we have this presentation that will try to distinguish these two terms and define them. And from a ludological point of view, the study of games, which consists a game primarily of voluntary participation of rules and some way to win a win state. And this will give us the chance to kind of look at storytelling itself as a voluntary activity with certain rules set up by the Brigata. And these become especially important uh, during plague time when winning and surviving becomes even more important and difficult. And then finally, we'll take a brief look at this notion of the sacred and profane elements of game playing. So again, I've posted here, uh, the table is hopefully visible, and these are the occurrences. And I'll admit early on the biases or weaknesses of this study, which I'm just beginning. Um, there can be fun and games in the Decameron or life without saying fun and games. Uh, the frame location of the quote can make it more or less meaningful, uh, whether it comes from Boccaccio, the author, or from one of the narrators. I did this uh, uh, lexical search with a Branca PDF and the search feature, not a concordance, so it might not be perfect. And then of course, I'm including nouns, verbs, and adjectival forms. Um, and with that said, I think a few uh, reflections can be made. I uh, didn't think about it, but thank you to Christina again for mentioning this gendered nature of giocare, which Boccaccio in insists early on is something that men get to do, right? To, uh, to get out and enjoy themselves, but not necessarily women. Um, day nine has the most giochi, the most references to words related to giochi, which makes us associate with the beffa, okay? That's inherent to days uh, seven, eight, nine. 9.4 has the most references to giochi and 
Juoki concentrated days, six through nine, but no references in 10, I think is important, uh, could be a part of what Dino Cervigni calls a pars destruens. So these first nine days where we see how we human beings in plague times and not have a hard time getting along. And this day 10 as a pars construens before going back to the city, going to reality of uh, maybe constructing a different society. And so I think it's interesting that this juoco is not present in 10. And then finally, solazzo, very interestingly, is present from the proemio all the way to the conclusione of the autore. And it includes references each and every day, more or less in different places. And so I would say, uh, again, it's a very interesting abundance of the terms, that mix of serious and non-serious circumstances from Alibek to Griselda. And as we shall see, the terms are not mutually exclusive as Pampinea and Boccaccio might have us believe from that early definition. And I would call these approximately the most ambiguous, problematic, uh, thought-provoking instances that merit the kind of attention I believe uh, this project deserves, but I am open to your suggestions. Uh, we have, again, returning to Alibeg di Viene Romita, cui rostico monaco, in segno di metre d'ave, eccetera, eccetera, but it is referred specifically in the text, avenne che il giuoco le cominciò a piacere, and I believe this is far more than the laugh we, we often get uh, at the surface with Boccaccio, when the theological and moral implications are present, it's a very interesting game, right? Having to do no less than with conversion to Christianity and achieving salvation. So I think this is a particularly interesting uh, one there. And again, the rig quote, I couldn't get because rig wouldn't translate it. Uh, I grabbed Musa and Bondanella there. Uh, the next one would be 7.9, uh, where we see Nicostra Clepirro, right? This is the most concentrated, uh, the highest number of references to solazzo in the title itself, the rubrica, they would, you got the condizionale, the per solazzo, il lor solazzo, solazzare. And I think this is interesting because of that highest number of references, variety of forms and tenses, and it's explicitly related again, this idea of enjoying oneself to not only coitus, but to adultery and deception. Uh, which again for the Decameron doesn't surprise us, but uh, it's quite the comment from Boccaccio. It's a deceptive, blatant act here where the husband is made to think what he sees is not even happening. Um, very interesting. And a fascinating dynamic between credere and vedere comes out, as well as this idea of the spoken word, the act of narrating is an invisible thing, right? Um, and so I wonder aloud, uh, as this project continues to develop, is uh, uh, novellare the exemplary solazzo, with solazzo being most closely connected to sexual gratification and adultery in this case, uh, what's the importance that we can assign based on the occurrences? And then uh, we have here the next to last one where it's the only tale, the only novella with reference both to solazzo and juoco in the same uh, tale, and here we see this idea of the juoco as beffa, making it work. Gli farò juoco is the statement. And then finally, the goal, the end uh, uh, outcome is the solazzo, ella con lui, in this case. And I think that's fascinating. Again, trying to pull apart, are they different terms, always, sometimes, etc. And then perhaps the most complicated, uh, uh, vexing tale of them all in general, but uh, for our purposes, I do wonder aloud about Gualtieri and, uh, and Griselda, this idea of il solazzo e il festeggiar che moltiplicarono, okay? And questions I present, uh, is solazzo for just and unjust alike? Is it connected merely to enjoyment or some sense of fairness? How is Gualtieri, of all people, deserving or able to achieve solazzo in, with his matta bestialità and this abuse of Griselda? And then we can't help but wonder, Juoco is not a part of day 10. Solazzo is, and what does solazzo mean if we accept that idea of the pars costruens, the way of rebuilding in a constructive way, uh, society and so on. Um, so yeah, we're getting close to the end here. I uh, am just sharing aloud these inherent kind of contradictions, which I feel is a, an invitation from Boccaccio to 
look at solazzo, leading to enjoyment, but giochi do not, is what the statement is in the beginning, right? Uh, from Pampinea, there's voluntary participation, they agree to leave Florence to have fun, to avoid death, and there's a system of rules, right? By definition, a game must have rules. The regimento, right, that they set up as kings and queens passing the uh, uh, laurel crown, but even then it is a system broken by Dioneo in the 10th tale of each day, and then broken unsystematically once by Filostrato, right, who has this reign of negative stories, of stories that end badly, which kind of contradicts the idea of having fun, getting away from that plague, which as uh, uh, Christina mentioned, Boccaccio himself doesn't mention all that much explicitly. And then finally, we're, we're left to wonder aloud with this idea of the wind state, uh, the esser vinti o non esser vinti. Is it achieved through solazzare, solazzarsi, or giocare? And I repeat, I wonder aloud, what do these mean based on the representations in the text? Part of the issue that we have that human nature tends to defy the rule and the rules and the plague in this case, and perhaps even in our own day, kind of exacerbates the effects of humans failing to abide, right? Because what gives us solazzo, the kind of giochi that lead to uh, pleasure or enjoyment, are often uh, bad things. And this is just an amazing quote that I share with my students always. Uh, this idea of io non so se io mi dica che sia dal vizio per malvagità di costume, etc., etc. Here Dioneo speaks. Il rider piuttosto delle cattive cose delle buone opere, e specialmente quando quelle cotali a noi non pertengono. This is our aesthetic as human beings for entertainment. And so it does complicate the rules of the narration game, let's say. And yeah, uh, one of the next to last points, I, I think it's very interesting having written uh, a, a bit on the notion, the representation of marriage in the Decameron, um, uh, another one coming soon, this idea of Boccaccio's uh, questioning of the good, the bono coniugali. And I just think it's great with Mazzotta and the world at play, right? Um, noting how this in theory, these examples of solazzo and gioco that are so intimately tied to marriage, um, it's marriage itself for Mazzotta, quote, is the metaphor of that reinstatement of op opposites to a prelapsarian and sacramental unity, which again, doesn't happen very well uh, in the representation. And I think it's intimately tied to these two terms. And yeah, um, we have, uh, again, this idea of the fascinating omnipresence of the terms. It's in the proemio. It's a part of Boccaccio's thesis, if we want to say. He brings it up every day and in the end. I think we have an interesting opportunity to apply a ludological point of view with the voluntary participation, the rules, the win state, whether we're talking playing, readings, living, salvation. And then, uh, Finally, here, it, it's very interesting to note these solazzevoli cose, right? In quelle mostrate in the novelle, e utile consiglio potrete, potranno, potremmo pigliare. But Boccaccio does make clear when he comes up to kind of tie it all together. Appresso assai ben si può conoscere queste cose, le solazzevoli cose, non nella chiesa, né tra chierici, né tra filosofanti, ma nei giardini in luogo di solazzo, but instead in a place of joy, in a place of merriment, and I would argue a place of play. And in conclusion, I say Boccaccio here invites us in times of pandemic especially to observe ourselves and our habits of giocare and solazzare, paying attention to how we participate, what the rules are and how they're followed or not. And based on that, what is our win state and whether it can be achieved or not reading, storytelling, playing, or seeking salvation. So thank you very much. Uh, now that's all. Thank you very much, Professor Essary. Thank you also for uh, demonstrating how to use creatively the construction of Zoom. Uh, but uh, no. The creatively, mezzo effectively, and so <laughs> Well, we are all learning. We are all in it together and distance. Is, 
Thank you very much. Really. Prego, prego. A voi.